Happy Monday. Um, school's back in session. And you can't blame the teacher when you're doing homeschooling on while your kid's struggling. I want to talk uh, today. I've just been hearing how hard it's been for so many kids and parents uh, during this time where parents need to be working if they can and also managing what is going on with the kids or managing themselves. I did an interview today and um, it was a very successful ADD person and it was without the structure at work. Um, he just uh, was really st struggling. So we're gonna talk about alternatives to ADD meds. Now, I'm not opposed to medication and I've prescribed them for a long time, but I'm always thinking to myself, first do no harm, use the least toxic, most effective treatment, and I'm gonna give you some very clear steps to at least consider. Um, update on my parents. My mom's actually doing really well. So I'm pretty excited about that. My dad's still struggling, but seems a little bit better every day. So again, thank you for your thoughts and for your prayers. Uh, but to the task at hand, how do you know if you even have ADD or if it's made up by the pharmaceutical companies? I've heard that a lot, or it's a fad diagnosis. You know you have ADD or your child has ADD or your spouse has ADD if they have these sort of five core criteria. Short attention span. That it's really hard for them to focus for a long period of time unless they are really interested. So the attention span stuff fools people. If they're really interested, they look like their attention's fine, so it just looks like they're not interested in you. Um, so the question about pregnant women, you wanna pay attention, because I'm gonna give you some things that are not potentially going to hurt the baby. Short attention span, but not for everything. It's short attention span for regular routine, everyday things like schoolwork, homework, paperwork, chores. It's number one. Number two is distractibility. They just see too much. They hear too much. They sense too much. They feel too much. When my ADHD daughter, Caitlin, was little, um, she just couldn't have anything with seams in it or tags. No seams, no tags. Um, they're more sensitive uh, on their body. They have a sensory processing issue. Um, the third one is organization is not their strong suit. Um, their rooms, their desks, their book bags. They often organize by the pile system. Pile here, pile there, pile, pile, everywhere. And time can be hard for them. In fact, they actually don't start getting ready until they're late. And so they're often just a couple of minutes for people with mild ADD and sometimes hours for people who have um, terrible ADD. Um, so disorganized for space and time, they tend to procrastinate. They just don't get things done early. In fact, they wait, they wanna get things done early, but they wait 
until the last possible minute. It's like they need, oh my God, I'm late. It's they need the stress in order to kick their brain in and get them to go. Um, so short attention span, but not for everything. Easily distracted. Organization's a problem. Procrastination. And then the last one is issues with impulse control. They often don't think before they say things. Don't think before they do things. So things get out of their mouth. It's like, oh no, did I say that? Did I do that? And so they end up with low self-esteem and often with relationship problems because they're not thinking ahead. And from an imaging standpoint, from a brain imaging standpoint, what we see at Amen Clinics is one, ADHD is not one thing. I wrote a book called Healing ADD, talk about seven different things. But we often see when people with ADD try to concentrate, they get low frontal lobe function. So it's like their brain betrays them and the harder they try, the worse it gets. So at Amen Clinics, if you came to the clinic, we would actually do two scans, one at rest, one when you concentrate. Why? Because we want to see what happens to your brain when you try to use it. Does it activate, which is what it should do, or does it deactivate, which is what it shouldn't do. It's sort of like you put your foot on the gas pedal and rather than the car go faster, your car goes slower. So in a sense, it's like your brain betrays you. And for me, imaging was so important because one, people see this as a medical problem, not a moral problem. And it helps me target treatment specifically to their brain. And I love my book, Healing ADD, because <laughs> it starts with, I know you're not going to read this book. Just read the first five pages. <laughs> and then I try to put as much as I can in those five pages. And all of us have ADD days. It's not ADD. You know you have ADD if you've been like this for a long time. So if the kindergarten teacher complained, and then the first and second and third and fourth grade teachers, they're like, he's talking too much, or he can't sit still, or he's distracted, or he's irritating other people. It's not you went through a pandemic where everything just sort of changed all at once and now you can't focus. No, that's stress. But there were really these problems and the pandemic made it significantly worse. So what do you do? Well, one, so I have 12 things. Number one, you attack each of the bright minds Risk factors. So in my book, The End of Mental Illness, I hope you get it. It's got 60 reviews, 4.6, so I love that. Thank you so much. Um, if you got a copy of it, leave a review. I would be so grateful. And in The End of Mental Illness, I talk about if you want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. And there's a mnemonic called Bright Minds. You have to attack each of those risk factors. And many of them are associated with ADD, like low blood flow. B in Bright Minds is blood flow. Low blood flow, classically, associated with ADD. So exercise increases blood flow, also helps focus. So if you're doing homeschooling, Go for a half an hour walk before 
school or put on a dance video on our podcast, Brain Warriors Way. We just released uh, a podcast with Julianne Huff. And if you just do 15 minutes of getting them moving, get yourself moving because you're going to be less irritable when you help them. Um, it will help so much. Um, so attack each of the bright minds risk factors. That's number one. Two, an elimination diet. Now is the time. You can supervise them. You can see what they eat. They're not getting anything from outside the house. And just see, do it for a week, seven days, and see if it won't make a difference. In one study from Holland, it was actually published in the journal Lancet, uh, they found an elimination diet decreased ADHD in 70% of the children. So what did they do? They let the kids eat vegetables, fruit, lamb, turkey, rice, pear juice. That was it. At the end of three months, 70% of them didn't have symptoms anymore. Find out if it's the food. I know your doctor might say, there's no evidence food matters. Food matters. I don't care what your doctor says. This is a published scientific study that was replicated. Food matters. And for breakfast, protein in the morning. And I'm sort of, I'm a fan of eggs. And had three of them this morning. And I had a cup of frozen blueberries. And, you know, I've just felt really good all throughout the day. An elimination diet, eliminate artificial dyes, preservatives, sweeteners. Um, and I would also eliminate gluten, corn, soy, and dairy. And you're like, oh, there's nothing I can eat. Yeah, there's about 10,000 things you can eat. Don't, don't, like, come on. God gave you a big brain for a reason. Um, virtually all of my wife's cookbooks, uh, she has one called The Brain Warrior's Way. Another one, we actually have a course on Amen University. Um, called Healing ADD at Home in 30 Days. Now yeah, would be a great time for that. And you get Tana's cookbook, Healing ADD Through Food. And most of the recipes have five ingredients or less. Um, so um, Bright Minds Risk Factors, eliminate artificial dyes, preservatives, sweeteners, minimize or eliminate processed foods, anything in a box, and then do this elimination diet for a week and just see what happens. After a week, if you're really diligent with it, you'll have a sense food impacts their behavior or it doesn't. And then I'm a big fan of a higher protein, lower simple carbohydrate diet um, because it's been found in studies to help focus longer. So if your energy sags in the afternoon, no bread, pasta, rice, sugar at lunch, you'll notice your energy. So, you know, if you take a piece of fish and put it on a salad with cut up veggies, a little olive oil and lemon, um, your energy is just likely going to be better for people who have ADD. Um, Exercise, I just can't tell you, head to head against ADD medicine. Exercise has been found to be significantly effective. And which means you probably should be decreasing the digital exercise they do with their thumbs. Here at my house, after we're done, I have my ping pong session with my niece, half an hour, she's getting back end. I'm so proud of her. Um, but that's a great exercise. Table tennis is a great exercise that you can do at home. I'm not a fan of anything that could potentially give a child a head injury. You want to make ADD worse? Give them a head injury. It'll get worse. All right. 
So decrease screen time we just talked about. Sleep. Sleep is so important. And if your children snore or you snore or your partner snores, when the pandemic's over, they need to see an ENT. Because in children, large tonsils or adenoids can give them sleep apnea and they look like they have ADD and they have learning problems and taking them out can be so helpful for them. Um, sleep apnea in adults makes you feel foggy and how you tell the difference. Well, if you didn't snore as a child and now you do as an adult, if you didn't have ADD symptoms as a kid and now you do as an adult, it's probably not the inherited form of ADD. And yes, by and large, you get it from your mother or from your father. Um, so sleep is so important. And I want you to ask you or your children, are you larks? You're just best in the morning. You're up early, you're focused. Like one of my nieces, up early, focused. She's just ready to go. Um, she's a lark. Or her sister is a night owl that, you know, left to her own. She gets up around 9.30 or 10. And she's good till midnight. What are you? And in our society, we actually discriminate against night owls by forcing them to get up early to perform before they're ready. And their whole lives, they're trying to fit in a system that doesn't fit their circadian rhythm. And it's sort of not fair. So what are you? And now, hopefully during this time, you can adjust your schedule better in the morning, better um, in the afternoon to work at your or your child's optimal time. Um, when you don't get good sleep, it actually decreases blood flow to your brain significantly. And for kids, when they fight you with sleep, always tell them growth hormone works when you're asleep and not really when you're awake. So if you want to grow, it's important to sleep. And then put good sleep routines in the book. There's a whole chapter on sleep. And I'm going to talk about alternative to sleep meds um, coming up this week. Um, so I also want you to work closely with an integrative physician, like one of ours, the Damon Clinics. And you know, during the pandemic, we're all open and we're all working and we're seeing patients and something happened today. Our call center just went boom, right? It had been pretty sleepy for the last, Four weeks, you know, everybody's nervous about the pandemic. Pop, I think, as the protesters are going, people are like tired of being home and they're like, we need help. Anyways, work with an integrative physician. Write this down. Check ferritin, which is a measure of iron stores. Low ferritin goes with ADD and anxiety. Vitamin D, know your level and optimize it. Magnesium, zinc, and check your thyroid levels. Low thyroid or high thyroid can go with you having trouble. Nine, well, what about nutraceuticals? Are there any nutraceuticals that have been shown to help? Um, EPA rich fish oil. So omega-3 fatty acids rich in EPA. Phosphatidyl serine. And in the end of mental illness, I have all the dosages. Um, Phosphatidyl serine can be helpful, has been shown in studies to help people with ADHD. Zinc, magnesium, those can be very helpful. There's also a treatment called neurofeedback where we put electrodes on your scalp, measure what's going on in your brain, 
And then we teach you to change it. Okay. And if you have a restless, hyperactive four-year-old, start them a year later in school. If they're sort of on the border or not even really on the border, later in school where their brain can develop for an extra year is better. Don't start kids early because it gives them more trouble. They'll be smaller than everybody else and it's not good for them. And then um, bright light therapy has been shown. So light therapy um, has been shown to help with mood and focus, energy and sleep. So 30 minutes in the morning, get a bright light therapy lamp that has about 10,000 lux um, or blue light at a certain level and you go, blue light is bad. No, blue light's awesome in the morning. You just don't want blue light at night because it turns off the production of melatonin. So bright light therapy, a half an hour in the morning, put it on while kids are eating breakfast or getting ready or starting to do their schoolwork, it will help support their focus. So I hope this has been helpful to you. What they eat matters, what they think matters, how you guys interact, but getting exercise going early, supporting them with the nutrients. We talked about feeding them brain healthy food. All of this can help you and your kids have better focus, a better brain, and a better life. Have a great Monday night.